Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture in Reading Visual Arts. And in this lecture, I'll talk about visual narratives. Now the biggest question that we can ask before we proceed to this video discussion is, how come there are narratives in visual arts? Now we all know that a picture paints a thousand words. The degree to which pictures, visual culture can communicate or present not just forms, but stories too. As a matter of fact, when we look at a certain picture, an image, or a figure, there is actually a story behind it. Pictures, images, and visual objects more generally are not just to be looked at, but they contain a story or a body of information which we can access as we might access the content of a written text as well. So in order for us to better appreciate pictures, images, or other visual objects, we need to look at them not only as mere objects or mere images. We also need to consider them as instruments in understanding whatever context there could be behind them. So it's true that a picture really paints a thousand words because a picture could project different realities. A picture arrests also different realities that a person or let's say in the case of a picture a photo photographer has or the one who authored that visual art. Now, what is narrative? What is a narrative in the context of visual arts? Narrative means story, but of course, it is more complex. The word comes from the Latin narrare, to relate, so it denotes both what is told and the process of telling. Now, this concept, narrative, tells us that there are two focuses when we talk about narrative. So it could be focusing on what is told. So it's the subject, the story, and also the process of telling, which means that there has to be a tool or instrumentality used in telling such a story. Narratology is the study of narrative. It begins with the ancients and with works such as Aristotle's Poetics. More recently, it has been associated with structuralists like Gerard Jeanette and Roland Barthes' early writings. And narratology has been widely used in expressing various realities of the world. Narrative theorists are, agree that the first and central issue about narrative is that stories always operate within a social context. We cannot easily determine if it's personal immediately unless we do not look at the social context of a certain story. Identifying the social context of a story will also help us understand the experiences or the realities being projected by the author, let's say, or the proponent of that visual art. The way we organize the content of a narrative, what elements it must have, who reads it, primarily your audience, where it is read, and what it seems to be saying are all determined by its cultural context. So for example, if I were to write a story, then definitely there are a lot of things that I need to consider. I should consider not only arresting the reality in that virtual art or in that literary piece, but I also need to consider the cultural context. Not only mine as the writer or the author, but also the cultural context of my probable audience. So it's also important to consider elements like this. Now let's talk about plot and narrative. So we know that there are basic elements Right? And the, these basic elements of story include plot, narrator, characters, events, time and place. And if we are to discuss literature, there are still other basic elements of story. For example, we have conflict. However, I'd like to focus on this as these basic elements are more likely present as well in any form of visual arts. So we have plot. So this tells us what happened and why. So there is this arrangement of different events in a story, let's say, or in a literary piece. So telling us what happened and why that event happened tells us about the plot. Secondly, we have the narrator. It's the point of view from which it is told. So there are different points of view. Okay? But we also need to consider if the narrator is actually part of the story or if the narrator is merely narrating the series of events in the story and is actually out of the story. Third one, we also have the characters. They are very important, so they could be humans or otherwise. So it depends on the creativity or the imagination as to who these characters will be in a certain story. 
And then we also have events. Everything in the story that happens to or because of the characters. So these are the individual or perhaps the collective events that are happening in a story. And then we also have a time and place in which those events take place and the causal relations which link the events together. Now, time as an element is also very important because this may also lead us to understanding the social or the cultural context. So let's say the story was written during World War II. Now, we would also understand why the characterization of the different people involved in that story was that or was presented that way. Okay? Or we would also understand why the atmosphere or the mood in the story was presented in such a manner. So time and place will help us determine this as this will also give us the clue or the understanding as to why things are fashioned or were fashioned by the author that way in the story. So time um, is considered to be the most important design tools according to the theorists of narrative because we are talking narratives here. We are talking about narratives here. And so time is very essential. It cannot be told in visual texts or even in narrative pictures. So we cannot say that when we look at a visual picture or when we look at a narrative, let's say, automatically, we can understand what the time is all about. But we can only infer it from the structure of the visual text. So that's why we need to consider also the plot okay, or the series of events in a story. Or if it is, let's say, a visual art, let's say a painting, the only way we can tell what time was utilized in that painting is for us to observe also and understand the different elements present in that painting. Same goes with the sculpture okay, or the architectural form. So for example, if we look at an architectural structure and then we found that most of the columns are Doric or Corinthian, then we would know that there is that specific period when that, that architectural structure was made. So again, time is very essential in order for us to read visual arts. And then we also have content and narrative. This one is very important to be understood as well because narrative can also be implied or identified in a visual text by device such as the arrangement of the iconography or the use of perspective to provide a central focus. So for example, if we have an available narrative there for reading or analysis, we can better understand it by looking at the point of view, by understanding the, the point of view. Is the point of view coming from the narrator, the narrator being part of the characters, or is the point of view coming from the narrator being the one who's only dictating or narrating or sharing the series of events in a story? Okay. So the use of light particularly structures the reading of the narrative. Lightning draws attention to particular features in a text. So for example, in the context of painting, putting more emphasis on a certain element in a painting will also give us more understanding of what is actually the center of focus or center of the focus in that, in that visual art. So for example, if there are more bright colors and if there are more whimsical drawings, then that style is definitely for fantasy, okay? Or it has fantastical sense. Or oftentimes we would understand it as something superficial. And then we also have dark images, which could, of course, steer our psychological aspect. And it, for us, it might be projected as something that shows melancholy or sadness, or loneliness. And then black and white collectively, when combined, they actually signal a particular aesthetic. Okay, It has a different effect also. It has different meaning. So for example, if you are to look at a visual art and then it shows or it's, it's black and white, then we could understand that maybe there is some sense of gloom, gloominess in that visual art. And it has to be considered as well in reading that visual art, in understanding the context. And then we also have everyday life as narrative. Every text belongs within a genre. There cannot be a text without a genre. In a similar vein, we can say that narrative pervades all of life. So we can say that there cannot be life without narrative because even our lives already are considered to be a form of narrative. 
this is not because everyone's life is necessarily structured like a narrative, like it has all the elements. It's not like that. Narrative is there not because it is inherent in life, so it is not naturally existing there, but because it envelops us and structure our practice or our experience of practice. So it's there because it actually tells us that there is this specific structure that shows us that this is going to be the first chapter, the next chapter of our lives. Okay? And it also gives us the idea that there is this particular flow of experiences in our lives. So that is where narrative comes into play in our concept of life. For example, if you're talking about uh, written masterpieces, literature, let's say, good writing is mimetic. So for example, if you write poetry, then poetry has to be a reflection of reality. It has to be a representation of something, an image, an experience, perhaps. Okay? So before I proceed to this one, the chapter five, visual art, visual culture, I'd like to put more focus first on the importance of understanding why there should be narrative and why there should be deep knowledge of narrative in reading visual arts. Well, as what I mentioned, narratives form part of our life, meaning it's there. Although it's not really there to dictate the structure of the kind of life that we are living, but narratives will give us ideas that there are certain experiences, there are certain divisions in our life that we need to understand as well. And in reading visual arts, narratives help us to understand, connect what we actually see or what we actually read to the reality. So we, we try to understand the mimesis, the representation of the reality, so that later on, we get to have deeper understanding of the things that we are seeing and reading. So in the context of visual arts, as what I mentioned in the previous lectures, it's not always as what they seem to look like. You need to dig deeper. You need to consider not only the personal context of the author, but also the cultural and the social context of both the author or the proponent and the audience. So I'm going to share my video lecture on chapter five in another video. So if you have any questions regarding this video discussion, can you post them on the open forum? Thank you very much for watching this video.